All right, welcome back. Now, in the last video, we learned how we can handle one Excel file with one sheet. But what if we have multiple sheets? So this is also, of course, certainly often a use case. So let's explore this. So let me just go in here. And this time I'm referencing the PBI training file. So this one here with three or more sheets. In this case, it's three for me, but it could be more than just three for you. So again, you find it in the resource section. So you can download this one, or you could also use your own files if you want. So let me just go in here and go to Excel workbook. I uh, want to import the data. And this time I'm referencing this one here. So let me just click on, in this case, uh, open. And then let's just have a look at the data. In this case, there is our navigator. And then we get three sheets, employees, orders, and suppliers. If you want to have a preview, just select the sheet itself. And then you can see here the preview of the data. For now, the data itself doesn't matter too much to us. It's more how we can handle uh, the naming of the sheets in case it changes. So let's just uh, reference, the, in this case, the three sheets I want to select here. And then click on, for instance, transform data like that, right? And again, this time we can see here we get our three sheets. And it's a little bit small, but if you take a closer look at the advanced editor, let me just copy this code for now, just to show this to you, control C to copy it. And one more time, I go to my editor here, I just paste this inside. And this time, again, it's referencing in here what we already know, an item, which in this case is suppliers, and also a sheet that it is a sheet. Now, in the last video, we just removed this item part, including the, the comma as separator. But this time, this will be an issue if we do that. And I'm going to show you uh, this in a minute. But just think about it. The last time, if you only have one sheet, then of course, Power BI is able to figure out, okay, if there's only one sheet, you don't have to specify the name. But this time, we have three sheets. And that means, of course, if I would remove this supplier item here, so course, let's do that. Let's go in here and just remove suppliers from here, in, including the comma. I just uh, control X to copy this out or to cut it out. Click on done. And this time you can see that we run into errors. So this, the last trick doesn't help us here because this time we have three sheets. So Power Query, and this goes Power BI, needs to know exactly what is the name of the sheet. So I need to go back to the advanced editor in here and I need to go in here and just uh, I just paste this again inside, item suppliers. I put in a comma here. It's kind of Excel sheet, that's fine. You can see no syntax errors. I click on done. So this is the original code, like, right? So I click on done. And of course, now you can see the data again. So, okay, so this can be handled, but still we have the same issue. Because if I click on close and apply, like that, okay, so we can load the data, that is fine. Of course, we can create our report. Also make sure that in this case that our data or model is set up. That's very important. That's why I want to point this out here. And of course, always make sure that you also have a dates table if you create a, a model where you want to create your reports. But let's go back to the actually pain point for us. Let's go to the report view. And let's just say again, I have my orders table here. And for instance, I'm using here, I'm going to reference into the sales here directly. Um, normally best practice, of course, create a measure. Don't use the columns uh, directly. But for now, as I said, this is not the main issue here. Let's go to the suppliers here, or let's say the employees and just see uh, the employee name, or let's say employee name here, and see which employee is responsible, in this case, for each of the sales. So this works fine. We can create our reports, but then uh, the bad thing happens. Again, I'm opening this, oh, this one, uh, that was the wrong one. <laughs> Let me just close this. Uh, I open this file. Uh, with the three sheets in this case, again, could be more as well. Let me just click on OK in here. And then I name this, for instance, these are now the, not the orders anymore, but these are now the sales or orders, or it's just the name of, for instance, in this case, April in 23, right? Like that. I save it, Control S to save it. And again, I'm going back to my Power BI file here, and I try to refresh the data. And I have the same issue, but this time it tells me that actually three of those are wrong. But uh, the point is actually as long as, as soon as one is wrong, like this one, the key didn't match any rows in the table. That's the same error message we had last time that now also the other queries are blocked, as you can see it here, right? So if one runs into errors here because it's from the same file, all of them run into errors. So that will not work. So let me just go to the Excel file again 
and let's just name this order skin and then let's just find out how we can solve this. So control S to save it. Let's go back in here and let's just refresh this now. Click on refresh. And again, this works fine. And now our report is up to date. So what can we do? How can we handle this? We've seen that the first solution, just remove the hard-coded value, does not work. But we can do something else. We could go back inside uh, transform data in here. And uh, this time, what's important is that we have a closer look at the source, the first step. So if I click on source, this source here, this step and the way it looks like, that's the same in this case for all the three sheets because they all start from the original Excel file. So it looks here the same and in orders, it would be exactly the same if you go to source here, that's the same. And the interesting part for us now is actually the order of the sheet. Meaning, as you can see, orders here is the first sheet inside this list. Employees is the second sheet and suppliers is the third sheet. And because Power Query, in this case, the Power Query editor is zero indexed, it means that orders is actually the zero sheet, employees is the first sheet, and suppliers is the third sheet. Eh, sorry, the second sheet, okay? So zero, one, two. Okay, so how can we use this now? Well, we could go one more time inside the advanced editor here. So let's go maybe to the employees first, and you can see that employees is the second one, right? Um, just remember that, go back in. One more time, just to make sure, as orders is the zero, employees is the first, uh, so the second in total, but the first regarding the indexing, and supplies is second. That means, let me go to supplies, okay? Here we run into error when we just went to, in this case, the advanced editor, and we just removed this hard-coded value, items is equal to supplies. But because we know, actually, that this is the second indexed, so the third sheet in total, but the second index sheet, Instead of referencing the hard-coded value here with a name, which causes trouble for us, we can actually refer to the number. So that means that, let me just copy this one more time because it's very small in here. Let me go back inside the editor, just paste this like that. And we get actually now rid of the suppliers. But unfortunately, what we cannot do, at least as far as I know, is simply put in the two in here. We need to do it the following way. We need to get rid of everything in the brackets. So including that it is a sheet. We remove everything in here. We only keep the curly braces or curly brackets. I'm not sure actually if what this is named correctly, but let's remove everything here and instead put in simply the number two. So remember, it's simply the, the well, the third sheet minus one. So always sheet number minus one because it's zero indexed. And let's just use this now. Let's control C to copy this. And now let's go back to uh, the Power Query Editor and just go in here and just paste this inside. So paste this inside in here. Okay, and you see that now we only have source two. And let's just check what the data looks like after we have replaced this because the syntax is fine. So click on done, click on done. And you see that we still got the uh, correct data in here, right? So let's also adjust this here for the orders and employees, just to make sure that this works, go inside orders. Also go inside, let's go in here, the advanced editor. And I remove everything in here, including the brackets. Remove it, just put in a zero. Okay, the syntax is fine, click on done. And the third one for the employees, go in here one more time, click on the advanced editor. And this time remove everything in here this one as well and put in a one and then click on done and always make sure check that the data is still there in the final step okay so this seems to work so let's click on close and apply first and now let's see and we still got here our data okay and we got our three tables again the name of the table will not change even if the underlying name of the sheet will change but the more interesting part to us is what happens now if the name of the sheet changes. So does this uh, modification inside the query editor help us now to avoid running into issues regarding renaming of sheets? So let's try that. Let's go in here and I'm going to my PBI training. I still have it open actually in here. And now let's just check this. Let's say, and we made all three of them, right? Because we made all of them dynamic. So let's say 
These are the orders, uh, 23 underscore 23. And these are the employees, let's say for this one as well, underscore and then 23, 23. And finally, let me also rename the suppliers just to make sure that this works for all the sheets we have. So I'll go here and also underscore 23. The name itself, really, it's up to you, right? Uh, I just use some examples here. So press enter and let me just save this, save it. And because we currently visualize uh, here the employees, so let's call there's also an employee which is called, or let's just rename, for instance, uh, Robert. So Robert King is now, in this case, Dan, right? It's Dan, <laughs> Dan King, okay, whatever. Uh, Control S to save it. And let's go back inside here and let's go in here and let's try to refresh this and see what happens with Robert as well as whether we incurred any errors here. So let's click on refresh, refresh the data. And now you see that now it's not Robert anymore, it's Dan. And the refresh went through without any errors. So again, this helps us now to dynamically uh, renaming sheets, even because we need to do it or because uh, an automatic system does it automatically and sends the data into a specific location, may it be SharePoint or any other kind of uh, file system you have uh, where Power BI is then getting the data from. But this time there's no manual intervention anymore from our side, which helps us to save a lot of time and also some pain, right? So thanks for that, for your attention. Hopefully that is helpful as always, and I hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.